Okay, everybody. Hello, everybody. This is Napoleon against Europe. The year is 1805. This is the original setup for the long campaign. I will be doing the example of play with you, which you can find um, in the rule book at the end. Um, I've set up all of the forces. The setup for the ex extended um, example of play is exactly the same as it is for the 1805 to 1815 campaign. <clears throat> the only difference is that um, to play the example of play, you have to prepare your hand in a certain way. So I have prepared the hand. I'm going to go over the um, cards that make um, make up the hand for the extended example of play. So here we have the hand of the French player. Um, Persia, Schulmeister, Continental Blockade, Turning Movement, Cavalry of the Guard, and lastly, uh, and second to last, Soldiers of Year 2, and lastly, the Genius of Napoleon, which is the permanent card of France. So France will always get this card on every turn. <clears throat> Down here we have the coalition, um, starting with Wound, the Tyrol, Major Campaign, Nelson, Admiralty, Holy Empire and Holy Russia. These three cards, as you can see from the yellow um, <clears throat> arrows up here, are the permanent cards um, for the forces that form the coalition at the moment. So this one is the permanent English card. Um, this is the permanent Austrian card. And this is the permanent Russian card. So obviously, for example, if now um, Russia <clears throat> was neutral for some reason or in a forced peace, I assume it means that um, the coalition does not get this card back. So we will see what happens. Um, later on, but first I would like to show you the setup of um, the forces. In 1805, um, Napoleon is quite strong. Um, he holds... Um, most of Central Europe, which is very important. I mean, when you look at the map, you, you, it seems like there aren't that many forces. However, here we have um, the Grand Armée, um, which is in Lille, and it consists of several corps. It consists of um, a, re, um, a reduced guard unit, um, reserve cavalry, and he also has two um, subordinate uh, generals with him. Um, we have the forces over here, which are also French. All of this area is French held. Um, down to Tuscany as well, which is really, and of course Naples is also um, allied to France. Um, let me check. No, sorry, it's actually allied to Britain. Um, Turkey at the moment is um, neutral, but it can be um, gained as an ally in the in the next phase. Um, at the moment, uh, Napoleon cannot enter um, Spain or Portugal. Um, they are both allied with uh, the English, <clears throat> or the British, I should say. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the extended example of play to get to um, know the mechanics a little better. I played the 100 days and um, I made a couple of mistakes, which, you know, didn't really put me off in terms of going, OK, this game is unplayable. But it did mean that there were some mechanics that I obviously didn't really understand from reading the rules, which is why I'm going to, to, to do this um, extended example of play. And I will go through the steps that are explained in the rules, but I will not simulate um, the dice rolls. So I will actually roll the dice, and if the dice rolls um, yield a different uh, result, then so be it. So <clears throat> I will now show you the troops that we have over here. You can see um, in the far corner up here, that is the Russian army which only consists of two corps up here. And um, you have one corps up here holding Moscow. 
you have um, a couple of troops down here holding um, Kiev. So as we pan further, up here, I hope this is still in frame, um, these are um, the forces in St. Petersburg, you have one fleet here and two corps. <coughs> Um, now here we have the main forces of the Russians. Um, the first army is in Lublin. Um, it is um, commanded by General Kutusov. Here we have um, the guard in the fifth corps uh, commanded by Buxhauden. And here we've got Benningsen with one um, core and one um, mobile supply unit. Then over here, we enter into Prussia. We have one reduced core over here in Varsovi, Warsaw. We have Hohenlohe commanding one core and one um, mobile supply unit over here. We have one reduced core here in Berlin. We have the Elbe army, um, which is uh, commanded by Brunswick. He has one sub commander, um, two corpses and one, uh, two corps and what? Sorry, corpses. Two corps and one um, mobile supply unit. <clears throat> Sweden is allied with the English. Um, it's up here, one corps, one um, <coughs> one fleet. Now, one thing that needs to be understood is some of these um, naval units can only operate in certain areas. So. We have two um, Russian naval units. One is in the Black Sea and one is up here um, in St. Petersburg. Only one of them can actually operate outside of the Black Sea and the Baltic Sea. So basically, if we take this one up here, it can it can move down to here, but then this one here needs to stay put the other way around. Um, at the moment, the Bosphorus is free because it's neutral, so I believe you can actually pass through. Um, so now as we turn further to the, let's zoom out, to the west, um, these areas are all French held. Here we have um, the Netherlands, um, <clears throat> which are um, an ally of France. So this um, um, Dutch uh, fleet, which is actually in, in the port of Amsterdam, is being blockaded by this English um, fleet. <clears throat> um, here we have the Grand Armée, as I said. Over here we have a corps and a, and a fleet, two fleets in here, which are actually in Brest, which are being, um, which are being um, blockaded by these two fleets, so there's going to be naval battles, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, because when I first played it, I actually did it wrongly, and I was like, you know, what's the point? I still haven't figured out what the initiative rating on the naval battle is about. Um, I haven't found any mention in the rules as to when this is going to be used, but maybe we'll find out during the extended um, play. So, these are... This is a setup, basically. Um... The way the game operates is that um, you can either take all of the stacks for each of the armies, like the, um, Ger oh sorry, I forgot the one of the most important forces, that is the, Austri uh, the Austrian army. And interestingly enough, I always get thrown by the fact that although it's Autriche, Austria, they call the, um, the army... Um, um, L'Armée Allemagne, which basically means the German army. So when I first looked at this, I was like, what? Um, so uh, when you look at the map, don't get, don't get um, confused. The Prussian army is called the Elbe army and the Austrian army is called the German army. So here we've got um, the um, Austrian, and I'm going to refer to them as the Austrian army because otherwise it's going to get really, really um, confusing for me. Mack is um, commanding the Austrian forces, which consist of um, one reduced reserve cavalry, three corps, um, one <clears throat> mobile uh, supply unit, and Ferdinand is his sub-commander. Um, here we have um, 
in Budapest we have um, a supply unit and um, Belgard who is um, commanding the uh, 11th Corps. Charles is uh, sitting in Venice with one, two, three, three, three and a half corps and one mobile supply unit. And over here we have we have Jean with the 10th Corps. So basically they are holding these areas here in well what is what is then um, Austria. So <clears throat> in the first round, um, how this works is usually you have um, six up to seven rounds and the first four rounds are all clear weather. So it's called clair. So it means that no weather um, problems happen. You have um, a sequence of play which um, starts with The interface in which you declare war, in which you draw your cards, in which you have the budget phase, in which you have the diplomatic phase, the neutral major power movement phase and strategic redeployment phase. So we will skip all those because on the first turn, 1805, you start with the activation phase. Now, in the activation phase, each um, area, each, sorry, each player gets to um, have six activations. So when I first played this, I realized at some point that I wasn't um, even keeping track of who was activating um, because activation can happen in various ways. Number one is usually during this um, phase, during the activation phase, you will be doing your non-strategic movement. Um, you will be doing your naval battles. You will be doing your land battles, okay? Now, <clears throat> um, the meat and bones of this phase is probably the battles. Um, and you can battle and move in two ways. Number one, you select um, um, a unit or a group of units that you want to move that has a commander. And in order to move this, you can either use a card from your hand that corresponds to the activation um, points that are printed on the counter of the commander. So for example, um, <clears throat> Napoleon has an activation of one. It's the red one in the corner. So basically um, he's very cheap to activate if you like. So it means, I don't know, but I, I suppose the way you can explain it best is he is always at the ready to march. Others are more difficult to, to activate, so you need to spend more activation points to get them going. Um, or you can, not, uh, you can decide not to, not to spend any cards and just use one activation point to activate something that only has one activation point, so one commander that only has one activation point, or just move a unit. Um, and so I was happily um, doing these things until I realized I had completely lost track of what activation phase I was in. So was it my turn? Was it the enemy's turn? So basically when I say my turn, I actually will root for the French. Um, uh, while I'm, you know, playing the French. And then when I say I, when I'm playing the coalition, then I'm, of course, referring to the coalition. So it's a little bit of a split personality thing going on here. So when you're listening to me talking and I say I, you have to understand which area I'm, I'm operating from. Am I operating on behalf of the empire? In which case, then I is the empire. Am I operating on behalf of the coalition? Then, of course, I is the coalition. So in order for me to keep track of all of this, I have made little activation phase cards. So each group gets six activations per activation phase. And one of those activations can also be to pass, to say, well, I'm not going to do anything this turn. Um, so I've made six little cards for each one. I'm just cutting them up as I speak. And basically, whenever somebody has finished their activation, they have to um, 
set aside one of those cards so that the other one can start working. So, <clears throat> France goes first. And I will be referring all the time to the actual um, example of play, which if you own the game, you can find in the game book. Um, so uh, I will read out what I'm going to be doing and I will also try and understand and explain um, because this is pretty much a teach myself video why we are doing certain things. So <clears throat> <coughs> we start with the second French round. Um, the French player chooses to play the Persica card. So basically what we do is we take our cards. Actually, it's not Persica. This is a misprint. It's called Persia. The card is called Persia. And, and what it says is you can put a court of two steps and a Russian general in the foreign wars box. This is a, um, an activity you can, um, you can take. However, you can only do this during the diplomacy um, round. Um, now, foreign wars um, are quite nice because what you can do is you can actually take, for example, in this case, the Russians and put them into a foreign war so that they're not available in the next in the next um, year, which is quite powerful. But we're not going to be doing this. We are going to um, um, use its activation points. It has three activation points and we're going to use two of these. And this is very important. Activation points in this game can be saved. So if you have a card that has like this three activation points, um, it means that later on, if you only use two, you can actually put them into your stock up here and you have one left over, which is really powerful. Um, because I know other games where you use activation points and if you have used them, um, if you don't use them in your, on your turn, they're lost. So we're going to use <coughs> the three activation points um, to activate Marmont who is up here in Holland um, and he commands um, a reduced French corps. Now what he's going to be doing is, his mission is to collect the scattered forces in the north of Europe and move them to Bavaria. So, just to give you an idea, Bavaria or Bavari actually doesn't exist at that moment in time, but here we have Munich. So basically, that is that is um, the today. It's the um, <clears throat> it's the capital of Bavaria. So basically, he's going to move from up here all the way down here. Um, so what he's going to be doing is um, he's going to declare a forced march because um, he has three steps. Sorry, his 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 French corps has four movement points, so he could move. One, two, three, four, down to Würzburg. However, um, uh, he is not only going to move, but he's also going to um, um, hold on. Oh, there's a setup error. He's supposed to get this. Dutch core apologies. Um, apologies, apologies, apologies. And he also has a um, Dutch core, and this only has three movement steps. So he's going to do the following. He's going to declare um, a, fa a forced march. This means that he can double his movement allowance. So um, three becomes six. <clears throat> No, actually, this is interesting because um, according to the setup plan, he does not have. A core there. He doesn't have the Dutch core. Now, this is strange. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, no. 
this is interesting because what we're playing at the moment doesn't really this extended play uses a different setup i'm not quite sure why Okay, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pretending that um, the example of play is right, which it's not. So <clears throat> we're going to move into Hanover and we're going to, put, to pick up this elite core. One movement point. Then we're going to be... Then we're going to be ah. <clears throat> at this stage, <clears throat> Hessen is neutral. And you cannot simply walk into a neutral country. So he cannot just walk into Hessen. So what he's going to do is he is going to um, um, move to Berg. So it's one, two, three. Berg is a national territory of Bavaria. Um, and he's going to invade Thüringen, which is an Austrian ally. And seeing as he's at war, France is at war with Austria, he can invade all of its allies, according to the game rules. Um, and now he's going to expand one more movement point to take control. So basically he has spent one, two, this is actually one area here, Berg. So it's one, two, three, another point four to take control. So he's going to get um, a control marker here for Thüringen. And now he's going to move into Würzburg, which is now Bavaria, or which is Bavaria. Um, now he needs to take to make an attrition test. Um, and he is taking over this Bavarian. core as well and Nai is going to go into the reserve. So <clears throat> he now needs to make an attrition test but only for the forces that actually force marched so not for the Bavarian force. So um, an attrition test and here I need to get my dice tower. <clears throat> an attrition test works as follows. Um, you count the number of steps that went on the first march, on the forced march. That is two, three, four steps. Um, and plus three because they have um, done an additional three movement steps. Um, it is a force that is more than 50% French, so it's a plus 3 minus 1, it's a plus 2, and we're going to roll a d6 to see what happens. 
We roll a 3 plus 2 is 5. And for um, 4 steps, this means we A lose a step on one of our French um, units. And we also need to roll an additional dime. We roll a 6. So we actually you lose two steps, which isn't very successful actually, because it means that we need to eliminate one of our, we're gonna eliminate the Dutch <coughs> uh, unit. So now uh, we have done this. <coughs> um, now the coalition gets to activate. So basically um, the French have activated. The coalition chooses to play the Tyrol card. This card um, has two activation points. And they're going to use it to activate Charles, who has an activation um, Level of two. Um, and in this scenario, um, the coalition cannot activate until or while Mantua and Ulm are not besieged or French forces have entered Austria. So, <clears throat> unless French uh, forces have entered Austria, which they haven't at this moment in time because this is Austria and they're not there, um, and or unless Mantua, which is a good question, is here, um, or Ulm, which is somewhere Stuttgart, Ulm, which is up here, the coalition cannot really do much. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use Charles to um, to go into Mantua. Now this is marshland, so you will have to expend two movement points. Now he has three <clears throat> and make a siege attack. So he's going to move in here using two of his movement points. And then he's going to expend his last movement point to besiege Mantua. So, for this, first of all, he gets a siege marker. This is the first round, so the siege marker has a plus zero, so there is no modifier. Now, <clears throat> how does a siege work? Um, first of all, um, to, to make a siege, you have to um, spend one movement point per attempt. Um, And let's check how many steps he's got. He's got two, four, six, six, seven steps. Um, the tactical value of the um, citadel is zero. He has a plus one. It's not an army. Um, so the it's a citadel, so it's a minus two. We roll a die, we roll a five. Minus one is a four. And that is stable, so it means that he has not been able to uh, win this siege event, so we're going to turn this over because as the siege continues, we're going to get additional um, 
uh, benefits because obviously as the siege continues, it's getting harder and harder for the people in the besieged city to hold um, the, the, the city. So now the coalition has done its um, activation. So now it's the French again. Remember the French still have one um, activation point left. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, activating Sanseur down here. He's got an activation of two. Now what we're going to be doing is we're not going to be using a card, but we're going to use the, I have one activation point even without a card, plus the one that we have up here, going down to zero, and we can activate Sanseur. Sanseur is in Tuscany, in Florence to be more precise, which is French <coughs> at this moment in time. Um, and he is going to... Um, He has four movement points and he is going to um, move to Rome, which is down here. So that's one movement point into the um, Papal State and then another one into Rome. Um, and he's going to besiege Rome. Now, Rome is a fortress and also a capital. Oops, which means that um, um, the, uh, there is no um, penalty for besieging Rome. So we roll a die. We roll a two plus um, his own tactical attack value, which is two, brings it up to four. Four is a result that is stable, so the siege continues. We just turn over the marker, so next time around he's going to get a plus three on this. Um, but he has four movement points, so he spent one, two, first one, three on the first siege attempt, so now he's going to um, spend his last one on the second siege attempt, so he's going to roll again. I roll a four plus one is five, plus two is seven, and seven is honors, and honors means the fortress is taken and the besieged forces return as reinforcements in the next budget phase. So basically it means that Rome has fallen. Um, and now what he's going to do is he has this mobile... Um, this mobile uh, supply unit, which he's going to expend. So we're going to put it into the into the uh, reserves. And he is turning um, Rome into national territory. Sorry, he's not going to um, turn it into national territory. It's a bit difficult with, with all of the different um, descriptors, but he's going to turn it into French territory in a way. So basically now... It, this is a supply line, so he can now use Rome when he traces supply. <clears throat> so supply is, you have to have a maximum of two um, movement points between you and the most, the closest French or, you know, allied area. So he could move, in theory, one, two, down to Tarent, which is down here. And still trace supply to here, if I read the rules correctly. So basically, Naples is not French, it's, it's held by the British, it's allied to the British, so this is what he's going to concentrate on next. So now <clears throat> the French are done, 
and it is the coalition again. And the coalition is going to <clears throat> activate the um, Austrian army. So now it's the um, coalition and they're going to um, activate Mack and the Austrian army in order to besiege Ulm, which is um, over here. <clears throat> so first, of course, they have to uh, play a card. Mack has an activation of three, so we need to find a card that has three. Um, and they choose the card Nelson. To activate him. He has um, a movement allowance of da, 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 three. One, two. So why does he need a forced march? According to this, he needs a forced march. Why? Ah, because this, so, this zone is not controlled. So he's going to spend one movement point to move in the, into Munich. He is expending another movement point to control Munich. So it's going to get a control marker. Oops. And then he's going to um, spend another movement point in order to move into the Ulm area. But if he wants to besiege Ulm, he needs to um, go into a forced march because um, he only has three movement points. Okay, now, um, this is a um, fortress, so we get a plus zero for him, because he doesn't have any particular, um, particularly strong skills. Um, we get a siege marker. I'm going to roll a die. We roll a four, and it's a, an army that does the besieging. Armies um, in this game have um, automatic engineering capability built in. So basically, um, we get a plus one for this. So we roll a four plus one is five, which means it's stable. So he does not, in fact, take Ulm. So he just sits there for the time being. <coughs> Now, we turn this over, so now we're actually moving away from the playthrough because in this area um, they actually managed to win. Now he needs to do his attrition test for the forced march. He had a, well, how many steps does he have? Two, three, five, seven steps. Um, it was a forced march plus one. It wasn't all in the national territory. Okay, so let's go. Um, we roll a five, six. That is um, one step loss. So we take one step loss over here. Okay. Um, so basically the coalition 
has finished its round. We're now in the fourth round. Um, so now we are in the last round of good weather. <coughs> the um, card we're playing is um, the Genius of Napoleon, which is the permanent French card, which allows <coughs> a forced march without an attrition test for a force commanded by Napoleon, which activates during this round. <coughs> so we're going to be doing this. We're going to take the Grand Armée from Lille. He's going to leave behind, according to this, um, one core to basically face off Britain. And um, moves to Ulm. And he is doing this um, via Soissons. One. Oh yeah, by the way, um, his... Um, he can have up to eight movement points in this forced march. Metz. Strasbourg, Baden, into Ulm. So now they're facing off. <clears throat> now um, the French player plays the card turning movement. And this one does the following. Mac can evade if he so chooses, but by playing the card turning movement, um, the evade check is reduced by three. So, Mark um, will do an evasion. A general must be present in order for, a, for an evasion event to happen. Um, the success is a die roll of five or greater. If you have cavalry superiority, you get a plus one, um, which they don't. The, the Austrians don't. Initiative value is lower than the active player's general. Well, um, Max is three, Napoleon is one, Napoleon's is one, so no, uh, Max is higher. The zone entered by the active player is in difficult terrain. It is not. So let's roll a die. We roll a two, minus three is minus one, so this evasion check is unsuccessful. Um... So what now happens is these two armies will battle it out. Now, um, there are additional things that can happen before a battle. And one of them is that you can ask um, allied forces commanded by <clears throat> a general to countermarch, which means basically you bring them in to help you against the attacker. Or also, as, a, as an attacker as well, you can also bring in additional forces to help you in your attack. <clears throat> um, counter marches um, work as follows. A general must be present, which is correct because Jean is a, is a general. So Jean is a general. Um, so yes, that uh, prerequisite is fulfilled. The battle zone is not in difficult terrain, so he can move into it easily. Um, And you need to roll a d6, which we will do now. So you roll, he rolls a 3 um, plus 2 because his, sorry, plus 1 because his defense um, value is 1, is a 4. So this is actually not successful because he needs to have a 5 or higher. 
Um, so this particular um, counter march was unsuccessful. Um, and um, this didn't happen. Uh, Napoleon doesn't call on anybody. Um, being Napoleon, he can do this on his own. So Jean stays put. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be entering into battle. Um, and for this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be <clears throat> moving the forces out onto a battle mat, which I have to create first. Because um, basically it's quite interesting to see how this whole thing plays out. Okay, so here we go. Here we have um, the forces set up. So first of all, what you have to determine is the morale value of each of the forces. And you do this by checking the morale values on each of the counters and you count which morale value comes up most often. So in, in Austria, this is very easy because all of them have a three, so the morale level is three. In France, we have one, two, three, four forces that have um, level five, one that has level six, and two that has level four. So basically, the morale is five. And then we calculate the combat odds. So that's basically the number of steps on one side as, as compared to the other. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen for the French. And um, one, two... Six for the um, Austrians, which is um, two to one. And now we have to decide what level of battle this is. So we have skirmishes and we have um, medium-sized battles and all-out war, I guess. Um, so basically, um, the number of steps in total. Um, Nineteen steps means it's a medium-sized battle. So we take the middle column. Then we also check cavalry superiority. Um, reserve cavalry, two steps for France, one step for um, Austria only. So the French get a plus one there. Um, Um, so also the French have a cavalry general, which also gives them the advantage. So it's a plus one on this one. Um, there are no terrain effects. The supply, everybody is in supply. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to check elite and special units. We have elite units. Um, And uh, the French will do so. They will send one elite unit into Spirit, the assault, which gives them a plus one as well. So we have a plus one for the cavalry. We have a plus one for the elite unit. Um, the attacking general um, gives us a plus three. So we're at um, plus five. Let's see if they're going to play any, um, any cards. Oh yeah, also, you can designate a subordinate commander as well. Okay, so they're going to use um, double for a plus two. So that's, that's three plus two is five, plus one is six, plus one is seven for the French. So we're gonna roll a, we're gonna roll two d6. 
and the result is a, oops, oh my god, it's three. So three plus seven plus one for the um, odds is eight, and that means a one plus.